Precision psychiatry can mean so many things. It could be very complex if you approach it from neuroscience perspective. It's about understanding circuits. It's about understanding how genes, environment, lifestyle, all can affect mental function. But precision in precision psychiatry could be fundamentally very simple too. And that's all about being precise what our patients want to know, what our patients want to address. Their unmet needs should be precisely handled. And for me, that's a fundamental definition of precision in precision psychiatry. Historically, for translation has been the way that we've developed most of our novel therapeutics in psychiatry. And this has been because of the limitations of doing research in humans. New technology is emerging, which enables us to address those circuits and symptoms in the human much more effectively. This enables us to move now where we should be, is focusing on the patient and back translating from the patient to the preclinical world. The NIMH, led by Bruce Cuthbert and Tom Insull, came up along with collaboration with many other researchers worldwide with what is now referred to as the RDOC framework. If we look at the research domains within RDOC, then we can categorise particular patients in particular ways and define more precisely the biological parameters we're going to try and measure. If we can measure those biological parameters in patients and show correlations between those parameters so that we land up with a new transdiagnostic framework where the biology across patients is similar, that gives us the opportunity to develop new hypotheses quickly and effectively. Biomedics Institute is an independent research institute embedded on the campus of the University Heidelberg in Germany. We have been collaborating with Spurring Engelheim as one of our first industry partners since 2015. At Biomedics, we combine the best of both worlds, the interface between academia and industry. One of the biggest challenges we have is identifying the right patient and understanding what the biological problems in that individual are. Current psychiatric practice does not routinely enable biological parameters to be measured. Very few patients receive an MRI scan or an EEG or even a blood sample. However, what we can do if we begin to develop hypotheses such as hypomyelination and schizophrenia is maybe there'll be biomarkers in the blood, maybe the electrophysiological parameters that can be measured quickly and effectively using digital technology, and maybe in early clinical research, there may be imaging or other technologies that enable us to identify the right patient. Our research focuses on one of the clinical findings of schizophrenia patients. With MRI techniques, it has been shown that white matter tracts of schizophrenia patients have less myelin integrity, and also postmortem studies of the brain has shown aberrant myelination and also fewer number of oligodendrocytes. We establish collaborations with clinicians from University of Ulm and Karolinska Institute. And in this clinical study, we scan the brains uh, with an MRI technique called rapid estimation of myelin for diagnostic imaging. And also we collect blood from the participants and generate iPACs. Our aim is to model the hypomyelination pathology of schizophrenia in a dish, meaning that we would like to have an in vitro platform in which we can study the myelination biology as well as the potential molecular pathways that lead to the onset and development of schizophrenia. The timing of the first symptoms of schizophrenia or its prodrome stage take place during adolescence and early adulthood. So the progress of myelination and its impairment and the pathogenesis of schizophrenia coincide. Myelination, in addition, ultimately helps building and maintaining the brain circuitry. With this knowledge, we raise the question how impaired myelination and thus oligodendrocytes play a role in developing schizophrenia. Myelination deficits are also observed in other psychiatric diseases such as bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. I believe it's important is rather to look at common and distinct symptoms between all these disorders and address whether decrease in white matter integrity correlate with the symptoms and whether its mitigation improve these symptoms. We, the basic researchers uh, and clinicians, 
should work in collaboration to reverse translate the clinical findings. Designing clinical trials to answer a precise question starts with first of all understanding what we need to address in clinical trial. This also means that we need the right tools to answer that question in a precise way. Now, unfortunately, most of the clinical measure what we have were never designed for this purpose. But thankfully, technology can come to our rescue there. Digital phenotyping, ecologically momentary assessment actually allow us to, to measure what we want in a precise way. And that would help us design smarter clinical trial in the future. We strongly believe that we cannot address all our patients' needs just with medication. If we truly want to offer our patient a suite of solution, we have to go beyond medication. Now, whether it's creating digital therapeutics or it's creating digital biomarker, this is perfectly aligned to our long-term vision of creating value beyond medication, and we are up to it.